Phyllis Bennis is author of Understanding the Palestinian-Israeli Conflict. She joins us now from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for your time. So um, what Donald Trump said is criticism specifically of the settlements is actually a pretty common criticism that a lot of people say. Does it have any more weight coming from the president of the United States? Well, this is certainly different than the position he's taken earlier. But I think we should note this was said in the context of an interview. This wasn't a scripted presentation. It's not at all clear that it reflects a serious shift in U.S. policy. Uh, it may be that this was part of the expression of concern about the Israeli escalation in Syria that happened over the weekend. Uh, the U.S. was not terribly happy about that, although they, they expressed a general statement supporting Israel's so-called right to self-defense. Uh, but it may have been that. There's simply no indication here that this is an actual shift in policy as opposed to, again, an off-the-cuff kind of statement from this president, which often comes out opposite of things that he said earlier. Okay, so to that point, exactly to that point, that he seems to often, maybe he will say one thing, then he'll tweet something else, and, and those things run conflict, and then it's in conflict exactly. with what the State Department is saying, et cetera, et cetera. Um, does that make it more difficult for the U.S. to be um, honest brokers, and I'm, I'm using the term loosely, in, in, this, in this situation when you're not really sure what the U.S. president means at any given time? Well, I think what it actually does is clarify that the U.S. is not an honest broker. Many of us have believed for many years that the U.S. has not been an honest broker, except in the context you might want to use the comparison to an honest real estate broker who is honest but reflects the interests of one side in the negotiations. That's been pretty much the U.S. position. It positioned itself as being in charge of negotiations, in charge of the diplomacy but with no illusion that it stood equally for the rights of both sides. The U.S. made very clear, U.S. negotiators uh, of the past have written in their books, we acted as Israel's lawyer. They've said that very explicitly. So I think, in fact, what this does is repeat again, and we've seen it before, that the U.S. is not an honest broker in this situation. What President Trump spoke of was the idea of a, quote, peace deal. That's very different than peace. Peace requires at least a modicum of justice. That was not on the agenda here. A deal implies ending resistance, essentially, to uh, Israeli power. That is not on the Palestinians' agenda. That's been the position uh, recently of the Palestinian leadership, bringing it closer to matching the position of a wide majority of Palestinian uh, civil society. So I think what we're seeing here is certainly not the end of the U.S. role as, a, as an honest broker, because it never was an honest broker. This is simply a clearer acknowledgment of that reality. Do you expect any um, blowback from, from Benjamin Netanyahu bristling at any type of, if this is actual criticism, um, bristling at criticism coming from Donald Trump? I think we may expect something. I don't expect it to be too harsh. Netanyahu knows that Trump remains his, his strong supporter. But I think that Netanyahu is likely to view his own relationship with the further right-wing elements of his cabinet, because remember, as right-wing as Netanyahu is, his cabinet is made up of further right and extremist right elements uh, to his right. And in that context, I think he will feel obligated to make some kind of a statement. I don't anticipate it will go very far. He is not about to break with the United States. Uh, President Trump has made clear that he is more, vi more, more officially and, and uh, formally pro-Israel than any other recent president, uh, and he's not about to put that at risk. But I think he will have to say something to satisfy his own right wing. Phyllis Bennis, thank you so much for joining us from Washington, D.C. We appreciate it.